The Ford Expedition is one of the last remaining few body-on-frame SUVs. Even though crossovers are heavily dominating sales when it comes to SUVs, many people still have needs for a large SUV like this. With a pretty big update just last year, the Expedition sales on into 2016 pretty much unchanged. So let's go ahead and check out this 2016 Ford Expedition Platinum. Now our trim of the Expedition we do have here is the top of the line Platinum model and it comes in this pretty good looking white Platinum exterior color. And then you also do have these pretty good looking 22 inch polished aluminum wheels as well. And since the Expedition is still based off of a truck, it still has a very truck like appearance of course. This means that it's very rugged looking and then also it has these very large headlamps and a pretty big grill in your face kind of grill and then a bulging out front hood too. Overall I really do love the styling of the Expedition. It's kind of starting to become a unique thing now since there's many crossovers nowadays. Now here goes the key fob design for the vehicle. You have your remote keyless entry lock unlock to release your tailgate and then your remote engine start and then your panic button as well. The buttons do feel pretty high quality too. Now you do have chrome exterior door handles and you have a keyless entry pad right here too, which Ford is still doing. Now the Expedition's architecture is getting kind of dated. It's been on this same basic platform since 2003, since the second generation Expedition. You also do have a brown leather interior with a two tones with the gray. You also do have a power driver seat, power recline, power lumbar and memory seat settings for two people. Now you also do have power deploying running boards which helps out quite a lot when getting in and out of the Expedition here. Now stepping on inside the step in height is fairly high but that's to be expected since this vehicle is based off of a truck and not a car like a lot of crossovers are. But when you step inside of this cabin here you're greeted with a very well appointed cabin and it's pretty luxurious. However, there's still something that's pretty dated about this cabin. Just the overall feel, it's kind of dated still. And they really need to do a full redesign of the Expedition's cabin. The steering wheel design is also getting pretty dated. Now you do have push button ignition. Just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start, of course. And what you're hearing there is a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 engine. Full leather wrapped steering wheel. And then you have the two toned with the black leather and the brown leather at the top portion right here. Coming to your transmission, pretty standard stuff. It's a six speed automatic with manual shiftability. And then you have a tow and haul mode too. When you put the vehicle into reverse, displays your rear view camera with guidance lines. And then you also do have rear parking sensors. Automatic driver's side window. Let's go ahead and pop up the hood, check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors with LED turn signal indicators. And you also do have blind spot detection as well. halogen projector beam headlights and on pretty much every trim you do get LED fog lights and you have parking sensors too now this is the new powertrain that Ford introduced to the Expedition lineup in 2015 when the Expedition was refreshed but it's essentially a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 that produces 365 horsepower at 5,000 RPM and 420 pound-feet of torque at 2,250 RPM with EPA estimates being an okay 15 in the city and 20 on the highway. And also we do have the four-wheel drive model. If you do go for the two-wheel drive model, you do get 16 in the city and 22 on the highway. Now, if you were to go back 10 years ago, 
for the Expedition, the fuel mileage was a lot worse. But this 3.5 liter V6 does provide the power of a V8 engine while providing the fuel economy of a V6. And it was even more powerful than the V8 powertrain that it replaced in the 2015 model year. Overall, this EcoBoost powertrain is very strong and it has pretty good towing capacity ratings of 9,200 pounds. Now, trims for the vehicle start at the XLT trim, which starts at $45,435. The Limited starts at $55,145. The King Ranch starts at $59,375. And then finally, the Platinum, like how we have here, starts at $60,000. $335 and then you could choose from this standard length Expedition or you can go for the Expedition EL which is for extended length which costs a little bit more. The total vehicle price for this particular one is a whopping $67,775. These vehicles are definitely not cheap. Now competitors for the vehicle, you have the vehicles in the full size SUV class of course this includes the likes of the Chevrolet Tahoe the Toyota Sequoia as well as the Nissan Armada not many competitors in this class anymore but its main competitor is the Chevy Tahoe and the GMC Yukon but if you're comparing the extended length then its main competitor is the Chevrolet Suburban really love these power deploying running boards. Now the Expedition also has a mechanical twin which is called the Lincoln Navigator but it's more on the higher end in terms of price and is more luxuriously equipped too. Now you do have all of your basic power necessities, power windows, power door locks, power mirrors and they also do power fold as well. Chrome interior door handles. Let's go ahead and rev it up. Very nice. Now, when talking about the interior of the Expedition here, it's all right. However, it's certainly getting a little dated. Now, the Chevrolet Tahoe, as well as the Suburban, have much better interiors in terms of styling, opulence, and its build quality and materials. But the Expedition still has a pretty well-appointed cabin, and it's still above average in the class. It's much better than the Toyota Sequoia and the Nissan Armada. However, for $67,000, I would certainly expect a soft-touch upper door panel. And then up here, it's hard-touch plastic on the dashboard, too. But at least you have a nice soft-touch armrest, and on the mid-door panel, too, it's decently soft-touch. And then you have this nice stitching, which gives it a little flare inside of here. But overall, this basic design is certainly getting a little dated. But maybe people do want hard-touch plastics inside of their utilitarian SUV here. But for $67,000, I would expect a much better interior. Now, coming to the steering wheel design, same with same with the in whole interior. It's getting a little dated here. Um, we have your cruise control buttons right here. These buttons right here control your little information center right there and these right here control that screen over there and then you have your stereo mounted audio controls, Bluetooth phone controls and your voice recognition. Now coming right here we also do have your power adjustable pedals which is a nice unique little feature Add a luxury touch there and then a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. As far as visibility goes inside of this vehicle uh, the glass area is excellent, A pillars are very thin and outward visibility is pretty good. When you get to rearward visibility is alright too. However, this vehicle feels very big to drive, but that's to be expected when you're driving a full-size body-on-frame SUV here. Coming up here, we also do have your garage home link. 
auto dimming review mirror, sunglass container, and then you have your sunroof with your sunroof controls. Coming down here, we have a little storage cubby, dual cup holders, and then the armrest is nice and soft touch with nice stitching. And you will find two USB ports down there, a little nice amount of center console storage, and a 12 volt power outlet. Over here we have your four wheel drive too, and then your trailer brake controls right here. And then you have your hill descent control, your traction control off button, and your power tailgate button. Now coming to the climate controls, they're pretty easy to figure out. I love how clean the layout looks. Um, we do have dual zone automatic climate control. Your temperatures are located right here, different zones, and your fan speeds. And then you have your rear window defroster, front window defroster, and your ventilated and heated front seats. Seating comfort in the Expedition is also excellent, and I love the little platinum logo that they put on here. Gives it a little flair. And then thigh support is also excellent too, and the side bolstering. Now coming to the gauges and the instrument cluster. I love the gauges and the instrument clusters from Ford. They look modern and they don't look dated at all. Now coming to this screen on the left side here, it basically shows you all your vehicle information. We have your RPM gauge over here, and then you have your speedometer right there too. And then you have your fuel gauge on the side. And then you can view your trip and your fuel economy data. Gives your average fuel economy, your towing, trailer status, trailer options, trailer setup off-road then you could change the settings too from the front park aid, rear park aid driver select suspension if you want to go to sport mode, normal mode or comfort mode advanced settings too then when you go to display mode you could change the display from digital speedometer or the RPM gauge distance till empty, fuel life, oil life percentage, sorry about that, oil pressure, the transmission temperature, oil temperature too, all that good stuff. And then when you get to this screen over here, it shows you your entertainment navigation. You can view what radio station is playing from here, and you can change your media source from here too, which is pretty cool. Then you have your navigation, it shows you turn by turn directions, and then your integrated compass, your phone, make phone calls from here all that good stuff very nice over here we also do have a little storage cubby and then a 12 volt power outlet right here too now let's get to the only change for the expedition for the 2016 model year this is the new sync 3 infotainment system which they're including on all new Fords now and I love the sync 3 much more than the my Ford touch system and the My4 Touch system was very underwhelming. This system is much more simpler and easy to use and the responsiveness is excellent. Now coming to your audio sources, you have your AM, FM, HD radio too. And then you have your Sirius satellite radio, CD player, Bluetooth streaming audio. Of course you also do have your USB port with iPod integration and your auxiliary input. Coming to climate, you could control your climate from here if you don't want to do it from these buttons down here. You have your temperatures, fan speed, zones, all that good stuff, and you can control the rear climate from here too. But it's just lightning quick in its responsiveness, and I love the whole interface. Search for sync on your device and select sync once it is found. And then you, of course, of course you can have your Bluetooth phone, then you have your digital clock up here, exterior temperature readout. We also do have a Wi-Fi hotspot on here too. And then here's your navigation system, pretty easy to use, and the rendering and the graphics are okay. You can enter in your destination by points of interest or by voice too. Let's go ahead and test out the voice recognition by the way. Please say a command. Tune to 87.9 FM. Tuning to FM 87.9. I love the voice recognition on the SYNC 3 system here works very well. And then you have your home screen button right here too. I think Ford has certainly nailed it when it comes to its infotainment system. Then you have your apps. You can add some apps on here. Series travel link. Then you have your settings. And I love how you could swipe like this. Works like a tablet kind of. 
And then you have your sound you could change, Bluetooth settings, 911 assist, your mobile apps, navigation settings, lots of settings you could change here. Wi-Fi, vehicle, valet mode, display, ambient lighting for the interior. You could change the different colors here. Display settings, brightness, voice control, valet mode, Wi-Fi settings. You can view the available networks if you want notifications or not. All that good stuff. Overall, really love the Sync 3 infotainment system. It's certainly now one of the best in the business. Now driving the Expedition, since this vehicle has an independent rear suspension, it provides a very smooth and car-like ride quality. However, the Chevrolet Tahoe has a live rear axle, and so the ride quality is not as good as the Expedition. It's more truck-like and more jiggly in its ride quality. With that being said, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 certainly provides enough power and pretty good fuel efficiency too and best in class towing capabilities. But the handling and the steering on the Expedition certainly it's not its expertise. No full size SUV body on frame SUV has pretty good steering or handling. If there's one that has the best steering and handling capabilities, it's certainly the Chevrolet Tahoe. However, it's not the point of a full-size SUV. If you're looking for better handling capabilities, then go with a crossover. And also, this vehicle feels very big to drive behind the wheel, and you have to kind of go in big parking spaces. When you're trying to fit into tight parking spaces, it can make it very difficult. All right. And let's go ahead and shut down the vehicle. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the expedition. Power tailgate. Now when the seats are folded down in the vehicle, you get lots of cargo space and the load floor isn't as high as it is in the Chevrolet Tahoe. And then you also do have power folding third row seats, which used to be a unique feature on the Expedition until the Chevrolet Tahoe got it in the 2015 model year. Build quality and materials do follow through in the rear of the Expedition. Still hard touch on the upper door panel, soft touch everywhere else. Love these power deploying running boards. They really do help out quite a lot when getting in and out of the Expedition. And to fold the rear seats down, just pull on that lever right here. It's a very easy mechanism. Now when sitting back here, you will find that it's a pretty comfortable experience. There's lots of leg room, lots of headroom too. And you will find dual map pockets, rear air vents back here which are up here and then you have your rear AC controls heated rear seats too since we do have the top of the line platinum trim and a 110 volt power outlet and another 12 volt power outlet too however I'm pretty disappointed that there are no rear USB ports the Chevrolet Tahoe and the Suburban do have those features also there is no rear center armrest which I'm pretty disappointed in too now you can get captain's chairs in the Expedition back here if you want Now when you get into the third row, you have to put that seat up and fold it up like that. And it's a pretty easy mechanism to do. Now when you're sitting back here in the Expedition, it's actually pretty comfortable f for an adult like me. The seats are very comfortable. And then also, the legroom is not too shabby either. We do have dual cup holders back here as well. Now comparing this to the Chevy Tahoe in terms of its third row seat, the Expedition certainly wins by far. It's way more comfortable than the Chevrolet Tahoe's third row. However, if you do want more rear seat legroom as well as more cargo capacity in the Expedition, go for the Expedition Extended Lift version. It has a lot more room, but it's still pretty comfortable. I'm very surprised about this third row seat back here. And you do have rear air vents back here too. All right. 
powered passenger seat with power recline and power lumbar. Glove box compartment, nice and damp. So even though the Ford Expedition doesn't have the most up-to-date styling on the interior or the exterior or the most up-to-date architecture, it's still one of the best full-size body-on-frame SUVs because it certainly gets the fundamentals right. With its independent rear suspension that provides a very smooth and comfortable ride, its strong and fuel-efficient 3.5 liter V6 turbocharged powertrain, and its very easily accessible third row seat and its very slick infotainment system. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.